Today, let's make a moss garden and the figures that inhabit it. Moss Garden Gnome's Crush. I got some moss out of the nature and brought it inside after thoroughly cleaning it with a garden hose. And here I'm cleaning it out further and I trimmed the roots with the scissors to get it as flat as I could without getting too deep. Here I'm making some drainage, not with gravel because I didn't have any, but rather with packing peanuts. Added some potting soil and some water so that the moss may drink. And I'm going to terraform or make some shape of the landscape with old bath towel. I didn't want it flat, I wanted to have a bit of shape to it, so I added that in there and put the moss on top of that. So that I'll have some hills, not just a flat terrain. Here I have some little pine trees, actually that's kind of moss as well, and a little lichen for contrast. Putting in some sprigs, little plants, and now let's make the figures. Pre-swirled clay, and then I'm going to swirl them all together. This took some time, a little time lapse here, or a jump in time, and there's the rock. The rock that I will make the gnomes out of. Of course it's clay, but you got the idea. Here I'm making a tool, it's a crescent tool. I needed a crescent shape, so I made it out of a dowel rod. Now let's make the figures. Three figures of the same size. Three little gnomes. Garden gnomes. I'll start by making his bottom rounded and uh, determine which way is up, I will make the top. There we go. Pointy little hat on a gnome. I don't want to smudge or smear, so I'm just cutting this piece off. I want to keep that swirl pattern. So instead of uh, smudging and smearing or twisting, I'm merely patting and pressing into the clay. And you might not be able to tell here, but I'm folding or rolling the knife blade upwards so that the head will form. So we have a nice round head. All right. Work on the color there. And rolling it with the shaft of the tool there helps make the color. Flattening the front there. I'll add the hands later and smooth the elbows into the body. And then I'll use a knife to make the, the opening, the front of his uniform there, or his clothing there. And I'm also using the rolling technique to make the head round at the cap as well. Now here I'm making the arms. And I cut the fingers out here, but I thought they looked a little too creepy, like a monster's hand. So later on, instead of cutting them out, I will simply just impress the knife blade into the uh, clay to make the hands. But this little scrap here off the sides makes good ears. Just making a half circle there for the ears and applying them to the figure. I'm using a pencil eraser to make the face. And then I use the crescent for the eyes, for the eyes. And I just flip it over, same tool, to make the mouth. Smelling eyes and the smelling mouth. And I'm using an old toothbrush to add texture. Not everywhere, but only where the stone would be weathered on a gnome. There they are. Now making their hats a sort of reddish color. This is uh, sidewalk chalk. You could use pastel too. And I'm doing this before I bake it. And for this particular fella, because he's crushing on a fairy, I'm giving him blush on his cheeks as well. And now let's bake them. And now they're done baking. 
hard as a rock. As a stone gnome. This is a laminate, laminating sheet. I'm just putting some uh, glitter on it. Preheat the oven to 392, I think it is, degrees, almost 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Cook it only for a few seconds, four or five seconds. Adult supervision required. All right, I'm using black paint to give contrast to the eyes, to the features of the face, the eyes and the mouth. The eyes and the mouth. I find the darkest uh, acrylic paint would be the gloss acrylic paint. If you want a good ink, use dark acrylic gloss acrylic paint. Here I'm putting on um, the dark paint and uh, I change this technique later on. Here it is, I'm smudging it on and then drying it right back off, hoping to leave some in the crack crevices, but I think that doesn't work very well. What does work better is to let that dry, which I did later, let that paint dry and then sand it lightly, not hard, but lightly, off the figure, leaving the paint in the cracks and crevices, creating a contrast look. And with these two colors, let's make the fairy's cloth, or the fairy's dress. I'm blending the two together with a slight shift each time I press it down, fold it, shift, fold, and that creates a blend. Once I get the blend like I want it, I'm flattening it out and cutting out the cloth, or cutting out the dress. Little zigzag pattern here at the top and the bottom to make fairy cloth for the fairy dress. All right, now let's make the fairy herself, the gnome's uh, crush. I'm using uh, wire from hardware cloth. It was handy, had it available. This will be the spine of the fairy. Well, small figures may not always need to put a armature inside of it, but I also wanted it to stick into the moss. And clay doesn't stick to wire very well, so I'm using masking tape to get a better grip between clay and the armature. Now let's make the fairy skin, fairy flesh if you will. I'm using water to keep things from sticking, but when you do want the clay to stick, dry that clay so that it will stick. Don't want water on it when you want it to stick. And so I dry it to, before I apply it to the armature, and wrap it on there like a mummy. And then I use a roller to make it not look like a mummy anymore, but rather like a fairy. And I cut off the excess. Excess. Access is the place you go to. Excess is extra stuff. Something like that. I'm still learning English, apparently. All right, wrinkles and a belly button. This may seem unnecessary, but the belly button does help me because the belly button is the very center of the human form. From head to toe, your belly button is the center. Or is that a head to fingertips? Toes to fingertips, something like that. Anyway, I use the belly button to be the center. It helps me proportion things well. Now let's make the head. Do a bit of shaping with it. Basically roll the tool to make the indent where the eyes would be. Kind of point the nose a bit. This is pretty much a round head altogether. Alright, coming together. Getting there. Now let's make the limbs. Now of course the arms are smaller than the legs, both in length and in girth or width. They're thinner than the legs, the arms are, and they're shorter than the legs. And I'm basically eyeing where they sh how they should fit, how big they should be. 
All right, put those aside, and now let's make the legs. The legs are basically a club shape, shaped like a club, wide at one end, going down, tapering down to tiny toes. This is the whole leg of that shape, of tapering down to small, from large to small. And here I am making the twin, and that's what you want. You want it to be as close to the other as possible. The twin of the other leg, as much as possible. And of course I cut off the excess clay. I'm using the roller to make the knees. Using the tool, the shaft of the tool, rolling it to make the knees. And my finger to make the ankles. And you want, when you fold the knee, you need to pull that knee back out and make it pony. Knees not indented per se. Only on the back side of it is it is it indented. Alright, so we're folding the leg there. The other leg is going to be stretched out uh, as she inclines in the moss. Using the roller for the knee and since there's a bigger space I'm using a bigger tool, my finger for the ankle. There we go. Don't worry, we shall have her clothed pretty soon. She's coming together. All right, let's get those clothes on her. The pink got kind of gummy compared to the blue clay. So I'm touching it up here a little bit at the top. Put in the creases in her clothing. She's inclined there, so we'll put some creases in front. All right, we're making an accessory for the fairy, a fairy accessory. Is this a purse? No, not a purse. Again, I'm using water to keep things from sticking together. Cutting this object down to shape and to size. Drying up that water. Putting in some cream color. Need some water there, there we go. And roll that flat as well. Now we gotta dry the clay so they'll stick together. Using tissue to do that. All right, what is this object? Creamy on the bottom and color on the outside. Well, with this crease, it comes together. It takes shape. It's a book, a fairy book. Yeah, I guess fairies can read. There we go. A spine for the book. All right, let's make her some arms to hold that book. A little rolling for the creases of the elbow and the wrist. I thought I pressed too hard there, but when I folded the arm, I made a nice crease. These arms uh, baked on pretty well, but if figure if your figure's arms don't bake or stick on, you can glue them on after you bake it later. Here we have uh, the hair. Just a little cream color mixed in with some yellow, and let's make the bangs. Let's put the bangs on the head and use. Uh, Use my little scissors on my knife tool, little handy tool those scissors are, to get rid of the excess. And then I just use the shaft of the tool, sculpting tool, to round it out and attach it to the head. And fine tune the, the bangs a little more. And fine tune the shape a little more. Now I stuck two dark. Uh, round circles on round balls onto the and flatten them onto the face for the eyes keep them kind of separated it gives it a cute look if you don't get them too close together and here I'm putting on the eyebrows and a little pink for the mouth same pink as the dress I use a knife to separate the lips all right 
She's baked hard as a rock, and let's make some wings for this fairy. This is the laminate I had cooked earlier with the glitter. Don't cook it too long, four or five seconds. And I just fold it and cut it with scissors. Cut it once and get two wings out of the dill by folding it like that. And let's hot glue it together. The fairy, that is. The wings and her head. And some strands of hair draped across the gnome whom she's leaning back upon. And it's pretty much done. And there you have it. Moss Garden Gnome's Crush. Thanks for watching.